The Democratic National Committee announced the lineup for the third round of Democratic primary debates Thursday. Only 10 candidates will be on the stage. The one-night event is scheduled to take place in Houston on September 12th. The contenders will be given one minute and 15 seconds to respond to questions and 45 seconds for responses and rebuttals. This is the first time the early frontrunners, former Vice President Joe Biden and Senator Elizabeth Warren will be on the same stage. In Thursday, Thursday's edition of Daily Trail Markers, the ongoing trade war between the U.S. and China is causing whiplash on Wall Street. Last week, stocks plunged after President Trump announced he was raising tariffs on Chinese imports. He called President Xi Jinping a, quote, enemy of America on Twitter. By Monday, the markets ended higher after the president struck a different tone. China called last night on top trade people and said, let's get back to the table. So we'll be getting back to the table. And I think they want to do something. They've been hurt very badly, but they understand this is the right thing to do. And I have great respect for it. I have great respect for it. This is a very positive development for the world. China said those phone calls never happened. Meanwhile, President Trump continues to tout the U.S. economy, a strategy his reelection campaign is counting on. A recent CBS News Battleground Tracker poll found Americans generally feel optimistic about the economy. However, the president's comments on Twitter are causing concern about the potential consequences. To learn more about what is on the minds of Americans in early voting states, we are joined by CBS News 2020 campaign reporters Musadiq Bidar in Des Moines, Iowa, and Nicole Skanga in Manchester, New Hampshire. Welcome to both of you. Let's start with the trade war between the U.S. and China. We've seen a lot of volatility in the markets as the back and forth between the two countries plays out. Musadiq, every couple of days, the president seems to change his tone toward China. How do voters in Iowa actually feel about the president's approach to these trade negotiations? Elin, a lot of times that depends on the voters' party affiliation. Uh, over the last few days, I've spoken to nearly two dozen voters, Republican and Democrat, about this issue. Uh, and the sense that I get that mostly everyone agrees this is something that's hurting Iowa farmers. Uh, the trade talks and the tariffs especially are tough on farmers here. Uh, a couple of days ago in Cedar Falls, which is only a short drive from here in Des Moines, I met a Republican voter, Liz Miller. Uh, she is a family farmer. She's had a farm in her family for over a century now. Uh, her youngest son currently manages the farm, and she told me that he hasn't made any profits in nearly three years. Uh, the way she put it is that she said he is just, quote, hand to mouth. So he is farming to feed himself and his family, but he's not making any money. Uh, and she said it's time for him to get a new job. And for someone who's been in family farming for over 100 years, that wasn't a very easy thing to say. Mm. Uh, however, she still supports the president. She said that uh, she loves the president's approach on China. She said China had been screwing American farmers for far too long. Mm. And she doesn't want the president to back down. So the sense that I get from voters and farmers like Liz Miller is that they feel they are soldiers on the front lines fighting this war with the president against China, uh, and they don't want him to back down. Uh, meanwhile, Democrats on the other side are very concerned. Uh, they don't think China's going to back down, and they think China's going to outlast the United States on this issue because they can turn to other countries like Brazil and Argentina for their agriculture imports. Uh, and so they are very concerned. Uh, a few Democrats here have told me that they feel the long term impact of this issue is going to lead to the extinction of family farming. Uh, and that's very concerning for folks here. Hmm, really interesting to hear that perspective. Uh, so a recent University of New Hampshire poll looked at the differences along party lines when it comes to the perception of President Trump's handling of the economy. It found that a majority, a vast majority of Republicans at 90 percent approve of how the president is handling things among independents, just over half approved. Meanwhile, only 9 percent of Democrats shared that positive view. So, Nicole, did the results of that poll reflect what you're actually hearing from people on the ground there in New Hampshire? Well, absolutely, Elaine. I attended a rally by President Donald Trump in Manchester just a couple weeks ago and spoke to over a dozen Republicans there that credit the president with historically low unemployment rates here in the Granite State, hovering around 2.5 percent. 
But Democrats that I meet at some of these 2020 presidential contender events tell a different story. They tell me that wage stagnation is a huge problem here in New Hampshire. New Hampshire has a minimum wage of just $7.25 an hour. That's the same as the federal minimum wage. Older voters that I speak with across the board tell me they're concerned about retirement and saving up and living out their later years without having to worry about things like housing. A number of voters I spoke with at a recent Biden campaign event told me that they had to start moving in with their children, their grandchildren, in order to make ends meet. On the other end of the spectrum, college students here in the Granite State are increasingly concerned about college and student loan debt. They are consistently standing up at rallies asking 2020 presidential contenders, what are you going to do about student loan debt? New Hampshire uh, sees one of the highest rates of average student loan debt in the country, over $30,000 per student. And in terms of what voters think on these issues, well, college students here tell me they're quite impressed by the plans of Senator Bernie Sanders and Senator Elizabeth Warren. In addition to that, another candidate making some news on the economy front is former Vice President Joe Biden, who came out with four big labor endorsements today in New Hampshire. A lot of union members looking uh, to the vice president uh, for his plans on health care and also increasing wages in support of him, the New Hampshire Firefighters Association also coming out today in support of former Vice President Joe Biden. Well, the economy is not the only thing on voters' minds. As we head into this election cycle, what are some of the other top concerns among voters that you've spoken with? I want to start with you, Musadiq. Well, Elaine, health care is always a big concern for people here, uh, as it is for uh, voters across the country. And really, even that goes back to an, an economic thing, because uh, a lot of voters tell me health care costs are one of their biggest financial burdens. Uh, so one thing I'll be uh, interested to keeping an eye on as we speed towards the Iowa caucuses here is how voters are going to feel about different candidates and their proposals on uh, Medicare for all. Where do voters stand on that? Uh, a lot of Democrats tell me that they don't want to get rid of private health insurance because uh, they are part of labor unions and their labors uh, uh, and those unions negotiate uh, health care uh, for them through their employers. So uh, they're, they're afraid of what's going to happen to that. Uh, somebody like Senator Sanders has been pretty vocal about uh, getting rid of uh, the private insurance companies, whereas uh, another frontrunner and Vice President Joe Biden wants to build on the Affordable Care Act and, and uh, allow people to still be able to buy private health insurance. So that's going to be an interesting issue to keep an eye on. Uh, where voters fall on that, uh, how candidates are able to present their plan and uh, convince them that uh, they'll still be able to have access to health insurance, affordable access to health insurance, uh, while keeping the plans that they are comfortable with. Right. It continues to be a top concern. Nicole, what about you there in New Hampshire? Well, one of the biggest issues I hear from younger voters is climate change, climate change, climate change. Uh, voters 18 to 25 years old consistently tell me they're worried about what they call a climate crisis here in New Hampshire and also across the world. Keep in mind, too, that according to a recent study, uh, voters between the ages of 18 and 25, about 45 percent of those voters identify as Democrat. So those are voters that the Democratic contenders are looking to uh, capture the attention of. They have been on college campuses for move-in days over the past few weeks, trying to recruit uh, folks to volunteer with them, to organize with them. So climate change, certainly a large issue. And also, of course, health care. Health care is a massive concern here in New Hampshire. It's the number one issue for voters, according to a recent CBS News battleground tracker. And it's also the most asked about issue at town halls that these 2020 contenders are hosting. I spoke with the voter Susan Wilkinson in Rochester the other day at a house party who told me that she was working two jobs, working for a school district as a parent advocate and for a landscaping company just to be able to afford health care. She pays out of pocket over $10,000 a year for health care. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, she says that she lost her husband just last year. Mm -hmm. They were not able to pay for all of his health care costs. So some very 
difficult stories come out coming out of these candidate events, uh, concerns around health care, also mental health. We saw two candidates roll out mental health care policies just in the past couple of weeks in New Hampshire, including uh, Mayor Pete Buttigieg, who was here this past weekend. And certainly suicide rates have seen a spike in New Hampshire over the past five years, uh, increasing by 30 percent. The opioid epidemic was a huge issue in 2016, and it's going to be an issue in 2020 as well. Right, affecting millions of Americans. Musadiq Bidar and Nicole Skanga, thank you both very much. Great to have you.